Recording in progress. I seek your Lordship's kind permission for commencement of the proceeding. Yes. I request the President Advocates Association to deliver the reference speech. The Honorable Chief Justice of Karnataka, Justice Rabelais, the Honorable Judges of High Court from Bangalore, Darwad, and Kalburgi Bench, the Learned Advocate General of State of Karnataka, Sri Shashikiran Shetty, the Deputy Solicitor General of Karnataka, Sri Shanti Bhushan, the Co Chairman of Bar Council of India, Sri Sadashiv Reddy, Learned Senior Advocates of High Court of Karnataka assembled here, Learned Members of the Bar Council, learned advocates assembled here for this reference, the President of the Women's Federation of Lawyers, Srimati Prabhamurthy, the family members of Sri D.N. Anjil Reddy, Sri K. Subhra, and Sri H.N. Narayan. Sri Anjil Reddy was a lawyer who was a class by himself. Sri Anjil Reddy's journey from a young village boy from Bagepalli Taluk, erstwhile Kola district, to one of the greatest lawyers in Bangalore is indeed a story by itself. He was a great master of law and was unrivaled in his powers of persuasion. Apart from his love for law, he had a passion for watches, for reading, and for travel. He was born as Devara Gudipalli Narayan Reddy Nanjun Reddy. His father was late Narayan Reddy and mother was Adama, who still survives at the age beyond 90. His birthplace was Devara Gudipalli in Gadidam in Bagepalli district. He was born on 10 4, 1954. He remained a bachelor throughout his life. His primary education was at the government primary school Devara Gadipalli from first to fourth. For his middle school, he attended government middle school Gundalapalli from fifth to seventh. For his high school, he joined junior college Bagepalli, eighth to tenth, and was few for PUC. He studied at Vijaya College Bengaluru. He obtained his degree from government college Bengaluru. He finished his LLB three years from BMS Law College. LLM in Bengaluru from Bengaluru University Law College. He was a master in various aspects of law, especially constitutional law, administrative law, and various other fields. As a young junior advocate, he joined Kesvi and Company. His seniors were the great and the barrister she was there already. His areas of expertise were constitution matters, election matters, education matters, and civil matters. It was unfortunate that God took him at a young age, and during the fag end of his life, he was appointed, he was awarded the Karnataka Rajyotsava Award in the year 2022. Three Subhra, K. Subhra 
was one of the leading senior counsels of Karnataka High Court. Very few who were born in early 1930s as lawyers have reached their 19 have reached their 90s, and one amongst them was Sri Subra. It was asked of Sri Subra how he was like a figure etched in stone, which time cannot build, nor wind or rain cannot erode. He was always at the court and was part of the court proceedings. He was always in the court post-COVID era or in the court video sessions. God gave him the best of health, the best of practice, and the best of life. He was truly blessed. And very few still today are there today who started independent practice in the year 1959 and continued like a versatile running horse till, till 2023, spanning six decades and four years. If all lawyers were to live the age of Sri Subra, the world will be full of lawyers. Sri Subra belonged to the Karade community who had migrated south from what is now the state of Maharashtra about 600 years ago and had settled in the verdant coastline of Dakshina Kannada. This community was primarily of agriculturists by profession and mostly cultivated arecanuts along with rice, fruit and vegetables. His great-grandfather was Sri Yadamale Achyut Bhatt. Sri Vasudev Bhatt was the grandfather of Sri Subra. Sri Subra was born on June 15, 1931 at Manila in Dakshina Kannada district as the third child of his parents, Sri Ganesh Ram and Sri Mati Saraswati. He joined the lower elementary school at Manila. One of his uh, teachers there was his father and this had both disadvantages and advantages. Between 1943 to 48, he completed his high school. When Sri Subarav turned 12, the day came to leave home for admittance to a high school in Nileshwar as a boarder. He lost his mother during his early high school days. Well, he was a hardworking student and did well in most subjects, but to his shock and dismay, however, it turned out that his grades in English were less than stellar, and as a result, he did not get admission into college. Fortunately, when he reapplied the following year, he succeeded in being admitted to St. Aloysius College in Mangalore for his intermediate studies. His pre-university was commenced and completed between 1948 and 1950. Sri Subrao completed the two-year intermediate program in St. Aloysius College, Mangalore with good grades. He got admission to the Honors Undergraduate Program in Madras Christian College in what was then known as Madras and now called Chennai. He completed his BA Honors between 1950 and 53. It was during this period that Sri Subrao got introduced to Marxism and found it greatly appealing. The Korean War had just started with General MacArthur leading the Americans siding with the Koreans. These events had a great impact on Sri Subrao because he began to see America as a dominant capitalist country that wanted to rule the world by subjugating all other nations through its policy of imperialism. The study of economics helped him slowly understand how capitalism leads to brazen inequality and exploitation. Sri Subra completed his BA honors with decent grades, but having scored 59.2%, missed getting first class by only 0.8%. His application for a job as a lecturer at Manipal College did not meet with success. He was instead promised a job as a bank officer in Syndicate Bank. Upon some reflection, Sri Subarav decided that this was not the career path he wished to pursue. The legal profession seemed more appealing and he applied to law school and was admitted to what was then one of the premier law colleges in the country, Pune Law College. It is said that a lawyer is always a critic and a rebel. And this rebellious young spirit in Sri Subarav found its fountain of life in a risky profession of law. Law College between 1953 to 1955, Pune Law College saw Sri Subrava as a dedicated student scoring a grade of more than 60% in all the subjects. After completing his law and graduating therefrom, Sri Subrava had begun apprenticing in the law offices of Sri B. Venkat Krishna. After a year of his uh, apprenticing with Sri B. Venkat Krishna, Sri Subrava decided but the time had come to expand his professional and intellectual horizons. Mangalore was a small town back then. He needed a change and the city of Bangalore was known for its cosmopolitan population, which he thought would allow him to broaden his career opportunities. One of his left-leaning acquaintances told Sri Subrava for certain Sri Motaya, a prominent liberal lawyer practicing in Bangalore, 
His initial meeting with Mr. Motaya was on 24th May 1956. He had a small office on 515 Avenue Road and employed just one junior lawyer, Mr. K.P. Appanna, who happened to have been his classmate in Madras Christian College. On January 30th, 1958, Sri Subra married Srimati Sushila. Their marriage was registered at Telichari Registrar's Office in Kerala and got married in a civil ceremony. On February 14, 1959, his first daughter Suhani was born. A year and a half later, their second daughter Maya was born on July 23, 1960. In 1959, Sri Subra had worked in his office, in the office of his senior for three years. He left Mr. Motaya's office and moved to Badepe. Sri Subra decided to start his independent practice in Avenue Road. Shortly thereafter, A.C. Nanjapa, a lawyer from Mysore, who practiced in adjacent office, started sending cases to help his fledgling independent office. Despite his help, these, those initial months of independent practice were hard, was hard for Sri Subra financially. There were days when Sri Subra didn't have money for a bus ticket and walked to and from his office at home. Mm -hmm. One particular evening saw him without funds to buy weekly groceries to feed his family. Thankfully, his neighborhood grocer lent him some rice, dal and vegetables on credit. Slowly and steadily though, the practice of Sri Subra picked up. The year 1962 was a turning point from where Sri Subra never looked back. Around the year 1984, the then Chief Justice of Karnataka, Karnataka High Court, Justice V.S. Maliman, asked Sri Subra whether he was willing to become a judge of the High Court of Karnataka. Reluctantly, he agreed. And Justice Malimat sent his name to the state government with his recommendation endorsing suitability of, suitability of Shri Subra for his appointment. For reasons that remain unknown to him, Shri Subra did not receive the appointment. For however, perhaps this was just as well as he continued to enjoy success in his work as a lawyer. Shri Subra mentored and trained many junior advocates, mentionable among them a retired judge of Honorable Supreme Court of India, Justice V. Gopal Gaur. During this, his journey of life, Subra gained vast experiences and global insight from his extended tour of US, China, Japan, and India. It was a matter of pride that Sri Subra represented India in the International Law Conference held in New York in 1986. Subra had appeared in more than 50,000 cases, mainly on labor matters. He has appeared only for the workmen in the labor matters. Innumerable of his cases are reported in law journals, cases concerning the workmen of Bini Mills, ITI, HMT, Mysore Lamp, Mysore Paper Mills, HAL, Bell and other institutions. The case of A. Rajappa versus VWSSB, in which Sri Subrav appeared for workmen, became the landmark judgment, and the case was finally decided by the constitutional bench of the Honorable Supreme Court regarding the status of industry as per Section 2J of the Industrial Disputes Act 1947. While Providence has blessed Sri Subra with relatively smooth sailing <coughs> practice and family life, he has thrown many squalls on its way when it came to health. Sri Subra faced plethora of health challenges and he continued to face them until his last breath. Even until the last few days of his ailing health, he used to remind his juniors of the pending matters and seek date so that he will appear immediately after vacation to provide relief for the workmen. He breathed this last on the last working day before summer vacation of the Honorable High Court. We deeply mourn the death demise of Sri Subhanallah. Sri H.S. Kumar Narayan, Leonard Senior Counsel, was a stellar senior counsel by himself. There was in this court, in these court halls of High Court, a great lawyer called Venkat Pramana Ayengar, popularly called as Rit Ayengar. He probably has the highest record of writs filed in all High Courts of India. To such a great man, Sri H. N. Narayan was a junior. India's brains are scattered all over the globe. And Sri H. N. Narayan's family was a shining example of all brothers and sisters being achievers. His older brother, a retired Air Commodore in the Air Force, his another brother, an explosive specialist, his another brother, a doctor with the United Nations, his sister, a doctorate in sociology, all a very close knit family. Sri H. N. Narayan was born on 21 10, 1936 in Shimoga. He was born in an illustrious family of lawyers. Sri H. N. Narayan was the son of late H.K. N. Acharya, a leading lawyer in Shimoga. His grandfather, late T.G. Narayan Ayengar, was a leading criminal lawyer with a metallic memory, which the grandson inherited. 
ਕਿ ਰੈਂਟਲ ਲੇਟ ਕੀ ਆਰ ਗੋਪਾ ਗੋਪੀ ਵੱਲ ਬਹਿੰਗਾ ਉਸ ਜੱਜ ਉਹ ਕਰਨਾਟਕ ਹਾਈ ਕੋਰਟ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਐਚ ਐਨ ਆਰ ਐਨ ਸਟੱਡੀ ਇਨ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਹਾਈ ਸਕੂਲ ਐਂਡ ਦੈਨ ਵੈਂਟ ਔਨ ਟੂ ਸਟੱਡੀ ਬੀਐਸਸੀ ਇਨ ਯੁਵਰਾਜਸ ਕਾਲਜ ਮੈਸੂਰ ਹੀ ਸਟੱਡੀ ਲਾ ਇਨ ਬੈਂਗਲੂਰ ਐਂਡ ਗ੍ਰੈਜੂਏਟਿਡ ਇਨ 1961 ਹੀ ਜੁਆਇਨਡ ਦ ਆਫਿਸ ਆਫ ਦ ਫੇਮਸ ਲਾਇਰ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਵੈਂਕਟ ਰਮਣ ਅਹਿੰਗਾਰ ਪਪੂਲਰ ਇਨ ਓਨਸ ਰਿਟਾਇਰਡ as his junior shri narayan learned immediately picked up the nuances of court craft and gained immense legal acumen he was then chosen to be a government advocate in 1970 he argued vociferously and fearlessly often with a tinge of dry humor that lightened the atmosphere he passed his baton upon a self imposed retirement to his colleague who is a senior advocate in our bar his close friends in the early years were former advocate general late jairam former advocate general late shri narsimurthy justice chandrakant rajars justice mn venkata chalaya justice en venkata maya and he continued his close relationship with them throughout his retirement days mr narayan excelled in areas such as service matters education land reforms land revenue he was just immaculately and was particularly particular about his presentation diction and language he was a voracious reader thoroughly enjoyed kannada literature and all english novels that came his way lord denning's books filled his library a very disciplined man he never compromised on his work but except for important tennis and cricket matches he had a passion that the courts to recognize and shared the interest in those days shri hn narayan unfortunately lost his beloved wife to cancer about 2 years ago it was a grief he could never overcome he developed an ear infection in the united states of america which worsened and led to complications in the brain which was irreversible he is survived by his son shri badri narayan an engineer living in america his daughter an architect presently in the united kingdom and two grandchildren shri hn narayan's demise is a great loss to our bar and we pray that his soul may rest in peace please sitting on the days shri shanti kiran shetty shashi kiran shetty learned advocate general Shri M. B. Nargun, Additional Solicitor General of India, Additional Advocates General, State Public Prosecutors and other Government Advocates. Shri H. Shanti Bhushan, Deputy Solicitor General of India and other Central Government Advocates. Shri Vishala Raghu H. L., Chairman, Karnataka State Bar Council and other members of the State Bar Council. Shri Vivek Subbareddi, President, Shri T. G. Ravi, General Secretary and other Office Bearers of the Advocates Association, Bangalore. lane registrar general registrars and other office bearers other officers of the registry of high court lane judicial officers lane senior advocates and other lane members of the bar family members of shri dn nanjunda reddy shri k subara and shri h n narayana senior advocates ladies and gentlemen today we have assembled here to mourn the sad demise of three senior advocates namely shri dn nanjunda reddy shri k subara and shri h n narayan during the period between february and april 2023 we have lost these three very distinguished and eminent members of the bar shri h n narayan was born on 21st october 1936 in shimoga born in an illustrious family of lawyers shri h n narayan was the son of late shri h k a nacharya leading lawyer in shimoga his grandfather shri t g narayan ayengar was leading criminal lawyer with metallic memory which the grandson inherited his uncle shri k r gopi vallabhai angar was the judge of karnataka high shri h n narayan studied in government high school and then went on to study bsc in yuvraj college mysore he then studied law law in college at bangalore and graduated in 1961 he joined the office of famous lawyer shri Venkataranga Ayyengar, popularly known as Rita Ayyengar, as his junior, Sri Narayan immediately picked up the nonces of court craft and gained immense legal acumen. Sri H. N. Narayan was appointed as government advocate in 1970. He used to argue horrifically and fearlessly that lightened the court atmosphere. Sri H. N. Narayan excelled in the areas such as service matters education land reforms land revenue etc he used to dress immaculately and was particular about his presentation diction and language he enjoyed kannada literature and all english novels came that came in his way she 
H. N. Narayana lost his beloved wife. To cancer a grief he never overcome. He survived by his son, Sri Padrish Narayan, an engineer living in America. His daughter is an architect presently in United Kingdom and grandchildren. Sri H. N. Narayana left for the heavenly abode on 4th February 2023. His demise is a great loss to the legal fraternity, and we pray that his soul may rest in peace. She DNA on 10th April 1954 in Bagepalli Taluk of Chikballapur district in Karnataka state to Sri Narayana Reddy and Srimati Adamma. Sri Nanjunda Reddy completed his earlier education in Chikballapur, PUC in Vijaya College at Bangalore, and completed his LLB from BMS Law College, Bangalore, and LLM from Bangalore University Law College, Bangalore. After completion of his law degree, Sri D. N. Nanjunda Reddy enrolled as an advocate in Bar Council in the year 1983 and joined as junior advocate in K. Sui and Company. His senior advocates were Sri G. V. Shantaraju, Sri Barrister Vasudeva Reddy from K. Sui and Company, played an important role in his legal profession as role models. Sri Nanjunda Reddy was specialized in constitutional law and was expert in the area of constitutional matters, election matters, education matters, and civil matters. With his thorough preparation and pleasant presentation of cases, he earned admiration of both the bench and the bar. Recognizing Sri Nanjunda Reddy's merit, government of Karnataka designated him as senior advocate in year 2005. As an advocate, he represented on behalf of Bangalore Development Authority, Brahat Bangalore Mahapalike, and Raju Gandhi University of Health Sciences, Bangalore. He was well known for his dignified conduct in the court. I could, came to know that Sri Nanjunda Reddy trained and guided many young advocates to become competent advocates. His life was fully dedicated to the service of people in need of legal assistance and guidance. I came to know Sri Nanjunja Reddy served as a trustee to Bangalore Professional Benevolent Trust, member building committee to the Advocates Association Bangalore, member Karnataka Law Reporting Council, and board members CML Law College. He was confirmed with Karnataka Rajyotsava Award in the year 2022 for his outstanding work towards society and legal fraternity. Sri Nanjunja Reddy departed for heavenly abode on 9th March 2020. On, on 15 June 1931 at Manila in Dakshin Kannada district. He did his primary schooling at Manila Lower Elementary School and high school education in Canara High School and obtained BA honors from Madras Christian College at Chennai. Sri Subara had initially worked as a bank officer, but then he decided to shift to legal profession and it seems to was more appealing to him. He applied and obtained from Pune Law College in 1955. Sri Subara was enrolled as an advocate in Bangalore Bar Council in the year 1956 and started practice under the guidance of Sri Motaya. Later in the year 1959, Sri Subara worked in the office of Motaya for three years and then started independent practice. In the year 1962, the year 1962 was a turning point from which Sri Subara never looked back. He became the legal advisor to Karnataka Electricity Board Employees Union, which gave him an appointment in labor law as an advocate, both literary and metaphorically for, his, for the working class. I'm told that Sri Subara had a lucrative practice in all fields of law, having clientele from all over the state. Sri Subara had appeared in more than 50,000 cases, mainly in labor matters. Sri Subara has trained and mentored many junior advocates, many judges, including Sri Justice V. Gopala Gowda, former judge of this court. And it was a matter of pride that in year 1986, Sri Subara represented India in the International Law Conference held in New York. Recognizing his rich knowledge and vast experience in field of legal profession, Sri Subara 
was designated as senior counsel in the year 1999. While he achieved the phenomenal success in profession, Sri Subara never forgot his obligation to society. He was actively involved in providing legal aid to the poor and underprivileged. Sri Subara left for the divine abode on 21st April 2023. He left behind his wife, Srimati Sushila, two daughters, namely Suhani, Maya, and grandchildren. On behalf of my brother and sister judges, and on my own behalf, as also the entire legal fraternity, I convey heartfelt condolences to the members of the bereaved family and pray the Almighty to bestow upon them courage and fortitude to bear the irreparable loss. May the departed souls rest in eternal peace. As a mark of respect for the departed soul, we shall now observe silence for two minutes. The court shall not sit for the rest of the day. Peace. Recording stopped. Thank mm -hmm. you.